everybody, it's Caroline Yubantu here from the English Tea. Uh, here in my house on lockdown, so hopefully you're all staying safe at home. Uh, I'm here today to show you just a quick simple phonics game that you can play with your child or your children at home. And for this game, all you'll need is a pen and some bits of paper or post-it notes and something to cover up the sounds because we're going to play the game Hunt the Sound. So I've just found in my cupboard some plastic cups. Uh, the glass ones won't do for this because we don't want to see the sound underneath. So something that is uh, covered up uh, so that the sounds can be concealed. So I've got four cups and we're going to use four sounds for this game. So on each of my pieces of paper or post-it notes, I've written a specific sound. So for this game, I've chosen to do some digraphs from phase three that the children might be practicing. So here we've got the ng sound. So it's two letters, but when we press the button, it only makes one sound. So ng, as in the word sing, s-i-ng, sing. I sing a song to cheer me up. I think we'll all be doing that today, won't we? The other one I've got is th, as in thin, or th, as in this. So there's two different ways of saying that digraph. So th, where your teeth vibrate on your tongue, or th, where you stick your tongue out. We quite like that one. So thing, or this. So the digraph is th, or th. We've chosen this one, we've got A, an A and an I making A, as in rain, R, A, N, rain. So we could think of some words with those sounds in before we play the game. And then the focus one, the one that we're going to hunt uh, today, is the E digraph. Two letter E's making the E sound, as in the word sheep, sh, e, p, sheep. So we've got our digraphs ready to go and we remind the children to perhaps have a go at saying the sounds first and perhaps putting them into words like we've done orally before we play the game. Uh, the one that we're going to hunt today in this particular round is the E sound. So that's the one that we are looking for. So here comes the fun bit. I'm going to screw up the sounds and pop them underneath the cups. So one sound under one cup. Okay, but to make it even more exciting and a little bit different, we're going to put a sweet treat under the E sound so that if you find that one, you get a little treat as well. So at this point, we need to make sure that the children's eyes are closed because at the moment, I think they might already know it's there. And then we give them a little mix up. Okay, eyes open. Right, let's hunt the phoneme. So the child will actually take away the cup to reveal the sound, open it up and see have we found the E under this cup. Oh dear, we haven't. Which one have we found? We've found the ng, ng sound. So we can pop that cup to the side and keep that for the next game. Right, decisions, decisions. Oh, I think I'm going to go for the middle one. So the child will be doing this. Lift the lid off. Oh, have we found it? No, we haven't. We found the th or th sound, haven't we? But it's not the E. We haven't got our treat yet. Oh, two more to go. Which one we're going to go for? I think we'll go for this one. Oh, I think we might be in luck here. We have found, I've seen spotted a little treat, but before we can eat it, we've got to say the sound. So the E sound is under that cup. Well done, you found the E sound. We'll put that to one side for later. Oh, we get to eat the sweet treat because we found it, which is exciting. And then just to finish it off, just check so that we weren't cheating. What's the other sound? A was underneath that cup. Brilliant. So now you've found the sound, you've enjoyed your sweet treat. Uh, what you can do again is you could Get the cups back again, and this time, on your post-it notes, you could have some words with those sounds in. So this one I've got s a ng song. That's going to go under one of them. Mm, enjoy my treat. 
This one is rain. Rain. That's going to go under there. This one is a ink. Think a ink. Think. Now, if you do read right, ink ink will be together. Letters and sounds ink will be separate. So the word think is going to go under there. And this time, I've got a challenge one in. Look what I've done here. A ng thing. Oh, this time I've got two of our digraphs in that particular sound. So I'm going to put that underneath, mix it up. I'm going to try and find the tricky one this time. So which one we're going to choose? I'm going to choose this one. Rain. Rain. And this time, if you've played the game previously and we've already found the A sound, you can try and get the child to match it up and see which digraph it has inside it. So the rain sound has the AI one and we can make a little list and stick it to that one and so on and so forth. So you can vary that game in different ways. You can place uh, different sounds underneath, different words. And once the children have got their little list of words, they can even write them in some sentences after. Okay, that's all for me today. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. So stay safe. Bye for now. Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm a teaching and learning consultant for primary science in Lancashire. And I'm here today to show you two experiments you can do from home and all you need is some paper. So the first one we're going to do is an air powered hovercraft. And the second one is a challenge to see if you can take one piece of paper and make it into a vessel that will hold a whole glass of water for a minute. So let's get cracking. Okay, so first of all, you need to make a piece of paper into a square. This is quite easy to do. Just take a piece of A4 paper, fold it over so this edge meets this edge, fold this bit over here, and you want to cut this bit off to be left with the square shape. Okay, so once we have our square shape, we're going to fold it over again to create a triangle and then fold it again in half to create a smaller triangle, like so. Then we're going to bend it down so this edge goes along that inner fold. If we've done this correctly, it should look like a kite at the end. And then the other side, so it looks like that. There we go, nice kite shape. And then we're going to fold this edge down the middle back onto these edges here. So make your folds nice and sharp. We'll do another one at this side. And there we have our hovercraft. Now if you just pull out the sides a little bit and we sit it on a desk, all we have to do is blow into that space there and we can start racing some hovercrafts. So the challenge is to see how far you can make that hovercraft go, but then why not try and make some of different sizes. What's the smallest one that you can make? Do they all perform in the same way? And can you have a competition in your house to see who can make theirs go the furthest? Once you've had a go with that, why not try some other materials from the house? Things you can find. It might be some spare wrapping paper. It might be some kitchen towel, some grease proof paper or some tin foil and see if you can make some hovercrafts the same size but using different materials. So for this one you're going to change the material and keep the size of the hovercraft the same. 
So here's your challenge. Take a piece of paper. Can you scrunch it, fold it, tear it to make a container or a vessel that will hold a glass of water for one minute without spilling it? Hop over to the end of the video to see one solution for how you can do it. Once you've had a go at experimenting, why don't you try and make one using this method and then show all your family how it's done. So again, you need a square piece of paper similar to the hovercraft. Fold it in half again, but this time we're going to do some folds slightly differently. So with this one, we want to take this bottom corner up into the middle here. So we're going to do that first. This one doesn't have to be too accurate. What you will end up with as well is these two lines should create a parallel line or parallel lines. Then we're going to do the same with this corner up into the middle part here. Again, accuracy isn't too important with this one. So you get this shape, again, creating those nice parallel lines there. Then we should have at the top of our piece of paper, we should have two flaps. One is going to fold downwards, one is going to go backwards, and we should be able to create, we can just put a little dent in it there so it stands up, a little vessel made out of paper that will hold water. So then you have to test it. So here's a glass to rest it in. Here's my glass of water for testing. Will it work? And if so, how long will it work for? So that's your experiment. Have a little try with it. And again, once you've tested this one, see if you can use other materials to make your water vessel with or if you can make water vessels of different sizes.